Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we have a kind of special review. This is review number 1885. So why is the number 1885 special you might ask? So you can maybe gather that in this video I'm wearing my Dunfermline Athletic Football Club shirt, the Pars as they're known in Scotland. They're not doing very well at the moment which has been the story of the last couple of years playing in the Scottish Championship at the moment under Stevie Crawford. Um, but my football team that I support was founded back in 1885. And so I wanted to kind of um, do a sort of special beer for this one since obviously football has been a big part of my life along with my, my dad actually. Um, unfortunately though for this video, since I am back in Sweden, I wasn't able to get a hold of any of the local Fife beers to review for you which was a bit unfortunate. Probably the biggest brewery in Fife is the Eden Brewery and it's been years actually since I've reviewed one of their beers. I think I've only done one on the channel. The other local breweries would be the, um, the Abbey Brewery which is very small and uh, again you've got Beath Brewery as well who are very good but again it's basically a guy in his garage um, so unfortunately I wasn't able to get hold of any of those but I did manage to find a beer that I thought would be really quite nice for some of the connections that the club has actually so for this review we are going to go to Belgium and we're reviewing my first beer from a brewery that I've seen around quite a lot but I've just never got around to actually reviewing anything from these guys so we're going to go to the Ardennes area which is in the southeastern part of Belgium in the uh, world Wallonia, Wallonia, the French speaking region. And we're having a taste of my first beer from Brasserie de Chouf. And this one is the Mix Chouf, which comes in at 8% ABV and it is a Scotch ale at 8% ABV. So you might ask, yeah, why is there a connection to the pars here? But, um, Outside of our stadium, you'll find a plaque about a guy called uh, Sergeant David Hunter, and he supported the Pars for many years. If I remember correctly, he might actually have served on the board or something like that. But this guy was um, fought in the First World War. He was a Victoria Cross recipient. Apparently, he got it because he managed to hold a position in torrential wind and rain for two days. He was with another group of soldiers, and in an enemy counterattack, they were basically cut off, and um, he was awarded the Victoria Cross for uh, managing to hold this position until they were until they were relieved actually but the story behind this uh, beer style actually making it to Belgium the Belgium Scotch Ales um, is the fact that in one of these breweries during the First World War, there was one of the brewers befriended a Scottish soldier who was there fighting on the Allied side and he taught this brewer to brew a beer for the Scottish soldiers that was like the ones they would have had at home. So I kind of thought this was very cool because the Pars obviously have a connection, as many other clubs do, to the First World War and um, there was that plaque outside the stadium too and uh, you know it's the kind of thing is what Scotland is all about these days is you know being an international country and you know making friends with our, our fellow countries around Europe you know I thought this was a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool beer to review for 1885. Actually, it's been a long time though since Dunfermline have played in Europe. It was back when uh, that must have been like 2007, 2008, something like that, that we were last in Europe. So long time, but hopefully we might go and play in Belgium at some point in the future. But yeah, I thought this would be a very cool beer to review for you for uh, review 1885, and like I say, my first time visiting a brewery that is very well regarded in Belgium. Anyway, though, um, as is usual with my reviews, then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that hopefully I can do in the future from Brasserie de Chouf. Very first time I'm tasting one of their beers. I've never actually even had one of these in a pub before. There's all the usual social media in there as well. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Belgian beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being added to whenever I get the opportunity. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Brasserie de Chouf then. So Brasserie de Chouf, as I've mentioned to you before, are kind of in the southeastern part of Belgium. They're based in Hufalis in Wallonia, Wallonie, the French-speaking region, which is very close to the Luxembourg border. But the two men behind this brewery are brothers-in-law Chris Bauerwerts, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, and Pierre Gobron. And they started the brewery up in an old cow shed in the middle of the Ardennes forest back in 1982. And this makes them one of the first of the new microwave breweries in Belgium that started opening in the 1980s. I believe the first one was uh, Brauerei de Graal, which opened a year earlier. Um, but that that whole thing came about because there was apparently a change in law which allowed beers 
to be brewed in smaller batches for tax purposes and things. It was something to do with the tax laws that allowed these Belgian breweries to, uh, to start up and brew on the smaller scale. But um, Pierre had basically attended a basic brewing course as part of his food technology studies and originally the two had home brewed together in their mother-in-law's garage borrowing many of her pots and pans before she eventually complained to a farmer by the name of Albert Masson who took an interest in them and uh, offered them the use of his cow shed and he put a little tax on that. He said that he wanted 0 0.025 euros per bottle of beer that they sold. I'm not sure exactly what that would have been in Belgian francs, but when they got the brewery up and running, they used 200,000 Belgian francs, which in today's money is around 5,000 euros. This helped them put together their equipment, and the first batch of beer that they brewed was only 49 litres, and this appeared in August of 1982. But Pierre focused on the brewing side of things. I think he worked as a, a production manager in an ice cream factory as well when they were first getting the brewery up and going, but Chris dealt with the business side of the company, and they continued to grow the brewery over the coming years before moving to a new brewing hall in 1991 which took the production up to 3,400 hectolitres of beer in the first year that it was open the following year it was up to 5,000 hectolitres and it continued to expand beyond that of course though you might see from the bottle that one of the most uh, recognisable things about this beer brand would be the gnomes that are on there and there's quite an interesting story as to how this came about. So the brothers decided to adopt the, brew the, the name brewery uh, for the brewery Basile de Achouf after the village of Achouf where the original brewery was based but the gnomes on the bottle basically came about due to coincidence. So Chris was watching the TV one day and apparently there had been a fire in a neighbouring village and they were hosting an auction to support the victims of this fire but a painting of a gnome came up on the screen and this really just stuck with him and uh, all all the gnomes that you'll see on these beers usually carry some hops and some barley and quite often they're staring at a glass of Le Chouf as well. Um, but this meant that the brewery became affectionately known as the Gnome Brewery and much of the initial popularity actually came from the Netherlands rather than their local area and uh, further afield from that as well. It was only a little bit more recently that this beer started to build its name in, uh, in Belgium and of course uh, you know I've seen these beers around for ages in Scotland they're quite easy to get actually if you go to any good beer shop and you see them over here in Sweden as well and uh, I think yeah Denmark I'm sure I've seen them when I've been over in Japan too but in 2006 though the brewery was bought by the Duvel Murkgaard group and by 2014 they'd scaled the brewing up to 125,000 hectolitres of beer per year. The current brewmaster that they have is Eric Lejean, is Eric Lejean if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Apologies for the French pronunciation it's been a long time since I've studied French at school and so far they've produced 17 different types of beer and this is quite common for Belgian breweries it's not all that common with the the kind of uh, new wave or with the very old Belgian breweries that they'll do new recipes and things like that it takes them a long time to develop these of course but at the brewery they offer brewery tours and they've also got a large bar there that can be visited too in the local area as is the case with much of Belgium is pretty nice actually there's a hell of a lot of breweries down there and this is probably one of the more kind of recognizable ones like I said to you earlier one of the first of the uh, the new wave of microbreweries that opened up in Belgium back in the 1980s. There's quite a few different uh, beers for these from these guys. The blonde one, the I forget what the exact name of that is, but their main blonde beer is the main production one. That takes up about 75% of the brewing and um, there's a few other beers apparently are scotch themed as well. The, the Nice, the Schuf Nice if it's called that is uh, the Christmas beer is kind of Scotch ale themed as well. But a very interesting little brewery this one, very recognisable and uh, it's quite cool to re it was quite cool to research this one and uh, find a little bit about the backstory of this brewery. Um, but yeah, that's all you really need to know about them for the moment. If you want to learn more, of course, you can check out the brewery website in the description below. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on at the brewery and you can check out the Rate Beer and Untapped pages to see all the different beers that they do. Like I said to you, they've done 17 different beers so far. If you are interested in Belgian breweries, um, I would recommend the website beertourism.be, which is where I found the information about this brewery to put in the notes for you there. But um, yeah, let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer then. So as you can see, the little gnome in this one is wearing his tartan trues, his little tartan trousers. Um, and uh, you can see he's got his hot flowers and barley on the back. You can see he is also on the bottle cap there. All of these beers actually do have individual bottle caps of course. This one is a 330 milliliter bottle and like I said it is 8% um, ABV, a Belgian take on the Scotch Ale. As I've told you before and as many of you watching the channel will probably know, Belgian beer is all about the yeast and uh, you have to be very careful when you're pouring these ones because sometimes they can explode a little bit but the Scotch Ale is a style of beer that I really enjoy and I love trying ones 
from different places. There's a couple of different ones in Belgium. I know there's the Gordon Scotch Ale and there's also the uh, the Silly Scotch as well. I'm sure I've reviewed the Gordon Scotch for you on the channel before, but I need to try and get a hold of the um, the Silly Scotch for you at some point. So we'll keep an eye out for that. And I'm sure that story I told you about the Scottish soldier befriending the, um, the Belgian brewer was... Um, I'm sure that was actually the Gordon Scotch, and I think I actually told you the story of that in the video itself. But let's get this guy out, and we'll get on with the taste, and then you could see a nice little bit of a smoky opening to this one as we get it out and into the glass. So yeah, Scotch ale, like I say, it's a really interesting style of beer. Um, a lot of people seem to conflate Scotch ale and wee heavy these days. Now, from my understanding, the wee heavy was a term that was coined by the Americans to make it kind of sound Scottish. But in Scotland, we would always call these beers by their, the shilling names. Essentially, um, the higher the shilling system was to refer to the tax that was put in these beers. So you would start off at like 40 shilling and work your way up 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 shilling. And as you went progressively up the scale, you'd have more malt in the beer, thus you'd have more alcohol, and then you'd have... Uh, and hence you'd have to actually pay more tax on it, hence the shilling things. And the shilling was the part of the, the pound sterling before they introduced decimalisation and things like this. And what is now known in America as a sort of wee heavy tends to be around the sort of 80, 90 shilling kind of thing. Some examples of that, of course, are the, uh, you know, the Dirty Bastard and things like that from Founders Brewery, of course. So maybe we can comment about that a little bit in this video then. So as you can see with this beer, it poured actually with a, just about a finger of solid head on and I would describe it as being a light kind of beigey almost fawny kind of beigey coloured head on this one and um, if I hold this beer up to the light this one is actually one of the more kind of red kind of looking scotch ales that I've come across some of them can be very dark and mahogany some of them can even be very like um, almost ebony in colour to be honest some of them are very very dark but this one is definitely a very dark almost red wine type colour actually, very dark sort of chestnutty red wine kind of colour. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones heading up towards the bottom of the head there and if you shine the light through it you will notice that you'll get a more kind of chestnutty mahogany type colour there on the very edge of it. But overall looks like a very nice beer when you consider that it is a scotch ale you know, it's not overly surprising in terms of its appearance. You'll also notice when you shine the light through it that this beer is pretty hazy. And when Belgian beer is yeast forward as it is, then that's not particularly surprising. One thing I should also say about this brewery is that all of the yeast strains that they use apparently have been developed um, in-house over time. So they are pretty unique, actually. And, you know, um, this brewery is, from what I gather, the, the brewmaster at Boone, who are very famous, one of the Lambic breweries. They seem to really rate this brewery as well. But, yeah, nice-looking beer, this one. So so let's take a closer look at the aroma and just see how we get on. Oh, that smells really nice actually. And the weird thing about this, I have to admit the strange thing about this aroma is that it smells really, really authentic. And, you know, for the Scottish versions of the Scotch Ale, I've always said this before, the American ones are a little bit more kind of brown sugary sweet and juicy fruity whereas the Scottish ones are a little bit more kind of toasty slightly bready and then the fruit's just a little bit more like phenolic kind of cakey medicinal um, but this one actually with the Belgian beers you would expect it to be a little bit more kind of bready and yeasty and things like that you'd expect it to have its own spin but it really does smell very like the ones you'll get in Scotland so I wasn't quite expecting that that's really nice um, but yeah, the way the brown sugars in this come out is really nice. That's the first thing that strikes me about this beer. Um, and it's got that more phenolic kind of fruity quality to it as well. It's really quirky that actually, I like it. Thumbs up to um, Brasilida Schuf for the, uh, for the aroma of this one. It does come across as very authentic. So let's try and break that down then. So straight away with this beer you're going to notice the malty qualities coming out of it. It's got a nice sort of brown bready base. Um, it's not overly toasty or anything like that. It comes across almost as being a little bit like rye bread or something. It's got a little bit of that kind of brown bready sweetness to it. Definitely a little bit of a kind of McVitie's digestive biscuity quality in there. And there's a nice toasty caramel on there. It's, it's, it's not quite well fired, but just a little bit kind of toasty um, brown sugar, actually. I really like how that... Um, I really like how that how that um, comes together in this one. It very, it's the, the way that the malt base in this one comes across is very, very nice. Um, I would have just, as I say, I just would have expected the bread to be a little bit more prominent in this one because of the the yeast-forward nature of the, the Belgian beers. But 
and you also get a little bit of a kind of nutty quality to this one there is a little bit of that in there and you can pick up some nice kind of woody undertones to the beer as well so pay attention to those because they are um, a little bit more subtle but that really is um, that's one of the most authentic noses I've come across on a Scotch ale that's not brewed in Scotland actually I mean I've had these beers I've had ones from Australia I've had ones from Japan, I've had one from Brazil, um, you know, I've had, I'm sure I've, I've had one from Germany as well, I've had one or two from around Scandinavia also, um, so it's it's interesting, you know, it's, it's really cool to find one that is as authentic as this, I think the next one that would be most authentic would be the Robert the Bruce from, um, from Three Floyds over in Moonstone, Indiana in America, but that's lower ABV than this one, that was only around 7% or 6.5 it might have been. It wasn't like a proper big heavy Scotch ale like this one is. Um, but granted you can get ones in America that are higher than 8%. But the aroma of this beer is very nice. On the hoppy side of things then, um, you've got a little touch of earthiness in there. You've got a little bit of a herbally kind of quality as well. And some nice lighter floral and grassy kind of notes there as well. I'd be curious to know if it's Belgian hops that they've used in here. Um, because it's the Belgian hops are always a little bit of a somewhere in between. The, uh, the German hops with the lighter, kind of brighter, um, grassy and floral quality and the English ones where it's a bit more herbal and slightly more earthy. The Belgian ones were always a little bit more in the middle of that and um, you would traditionally of course it would be English hops that would be used because we always produced our own malt in Scotland whereas the hops would come up from England. Um, but the hoppy notes that come out in this one do come across as being a little bit more English but I wouldn't be surprised if it's something like Bramling's Cross or whatever from... Um, from England that's in here, maybe a bit of Kent Golding or something too. And of course depending on what malts and stuff you mix these hops with, you are going to get different fruits in there, but a nice kind of Englishy sort of hoppy quality to this one. Uh, on the fruity side of things, again very authentic, it's got that nice sort of cough syrupy medicinal um, fruity quality to it as well. Nice little bit of a figgy note, I'd say it's mainly figs that dominate this one, but the, the more you smell it you're going to get a little touch of a kind of blackberry, black currant thing in there as well. Um, but overall a really really nice aroma on this one and the thing that surprises me about it of course is just how authentic it comes across and as I say I've repeated it a few times just because of how yeast forward Belgian beers normally are. But take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of this beer before you get stuck in, but let's have a taste of this one then and just see how we go. And this one is the mixed Schuf, an 8% Scotch ale from uh, Basley de Schuf in the Ardennes Forest, very close to the, uh, the Luxembourg border in Wallonie, the French-speaking region in Belgium. And we'll give a toast to the pars as well. Slange, school, Proust, Salty. That's really nice, yeah. This beer gets a thumbs up from me. Now I was saying that the aroma um, came across as very authentic. Um, you know, you can, that yeasty quality really comes out in the flavour, but the aroma is very good at masking it up, I have to say. But at the same time, the, the, the bready yeasty notes you get out of this, they're there in the beginning. But then the further you go into the aftertaste, it really starts to lean more to the aftertaste is very, very authentic. And that's that's a really interesting thing with this beer. A lot of beers can often be about the transitions they make in the flavours, but this one's really, really good. Yeah, that's really nice. Um so yeah, where to start with this beer then? Um straight away you're going to feel that nice bready, doughy, yeasty quality. That's just blanketed across the middle of your tongue. You can feel the malty side of this. You can feel a little bit of a kind of brown bready malt blanket in the middle of your tongue. And then as you go right into the centre, you can feel the sort of more doughy qualities that would come out from the yeast strains building on top of that. And um, the more you have of that, the more you focus on that, the more you can feel the middle of your tongue just becoming a little bit sweeter. It's almost a little bit like butterscotchy. Or something like that. I don't know if you would get a little bit of kind of diacetyl, but it's a little bit like um, it's a mix of like Werther's Original and McVitie's Digestive. It's kind of like that, that doughy yeasty thing. Like it's got the sort of 
consistency of a Werther's original, but it's got a little bit of the slightly brighter sweetness, if you like, of the um, of the the McVitie's digestive, that sort of syrupy stuff that holds the biscuits together. That's really interesting. And um, the further you go into the aftertaste as well, as the middle of your palate dries out, you start to get the more kind of toasty brown sugar elements. Just it's almost like you've just got a blob of that bready thing there, and it's almost around the edge of that blob in the middle of your palate that these um, more toasty brown sugary notes are coming out of this beer. But yeah, that's really nice how um, how it goes together. I like this. Um, I do like this beer. Certainly wouldn't hesitate to uh, to drink it again, of course. Um, yeah, um, try this if you get the chance. If you like this style of beer, you certainly will enjoy this one. One of the things I've always found dangerous about Belgian beers as well is that the alcohol is higher, um, but you can easily session a few of these. The Belgians do it themselves, but um, it's for those of you that for those of us that aren't used to drinking Belgian beer as often as them, it is pretty dangerous. But yeah, the, the middle of your palate in this one is really nice. If you move a little bit further forward, if you go to the centre of your palate then move further forward, there's a little touch of a nutty quality in there. Um, but then if you go to the front corners of the palate and move in, you've got a nice um, bit of woody quality to this beer too, which is um, which is interesting. I really like how that um, how, how those undertones play a role in the beer and those are definitely part of what makes this beer really very authentic but it's the doughy quality in this that is the, the um, that is the sort of unauthentic part if you like but that I mean you're getting a Belgian brewed scotch ale it's going to have a little Belgian twist on it you can't really say anything about that uh, and it definitely works out really really nicely all the flavours that you expect of a scotch ale are quite um, openly present in this one it is really nice Yeah, I really like how this beer um, goes together. Massive thumbs up from me. If you do have any other um, Belgian Scotch Ale recommendations, do let me know them in the, the description below. I'd love to review those for you. I know Silly Scotch and I've already reviewed Gordon Scotch, so do let me know some others. Um, on the hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate, you've got a nice little bit of earthiness there. Um, I do wonder, maybe they've used a mix of Belgian and English hops in this one, but you've got a nice little bit of a, a light earthiness in there. It does have a little bit of the darkness you'd expect of the, the English hops, but at the same time it's got a little bit of the brighter um, earthiness that you might expect of the German ones. As I said, Belgian hops usually find themselves somewhere in the middle, in my experience. But as you come further forward along the sides there, a little bit of a herbal quality, and as you reach the front corners of your palate, it's a little bit brighter and more floral, but then round the front curve of the palate, it's just a little bit lighter. <clears throat> pardon me, and more yeah, and more kind of grassy and of course behind the front curve of the palate you've got that little oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer. Yeah, that's good. Um, so yeah, on the fruity side of things then, it is quite similar to what you would expect from the aroma. I mean, mainly it's a nice red fruity and kind of berryish quality that you'll get from this one. Um, it does have a little bit of an almost kind of... There's a little bit of a sort of phenolic medicinal kind of quality to this, but really it's a little bit juicier and more figgy. I would say it's the figs that kind of dominate the fruity side of this beer, but if you just move forward um, on the front of your palate, and um, you'll really notice that there is a bit of a you'll notice that there's a kind of black currenty blackberry sort of um, flavour that comes out of this beer the further you go into the aftertaste. And the things that really linger there, it's some of the toasty brown sugar, some of the kind of brown bready qualities in there, and um, also a little bit of the earthy and herbal qualities. That's what really lingers into the aftertaste of the beer. And some of the woody undertones come out. I would say that this beer, I was talking about nutty undertones earlier, I really would say that this beer is a little bit more woody in its undertones rather than anything else. But overall, um, in terms of its flavour profile, a really nice and quite authentic beer, this one. If I was blind tasting this one, I would maybe guess that this one's kind of around the sort of 70 shilling mark, maybe at a push in 80, but I would say the sort of lightness of this beer in its mouthfeel. Um, and that's not to say it's light compared to others. It's, um, 
how do you say it? Um, this beer, it, it, it's quite a, it's quite an easy drink in Scotch. A lot of the ones that you can get are very thick and sort of sippers. This one is a, is a bit easier to drink than that. So keep that in mind with this one. I would definitely put it in around the 70 shilling category in this uh, within this style for that reason. Uh, in terms of the mouthfeel then, um, yeah, mid-bodied beer this one. Top end of mid-bodied. Carbonation is pretty smooth, um, but it's you know, obviously the Belgian beers, because of the bottle fermentation, the carbonation is a bit more active compared to others. Um, but I would describe this, the overall mouthfeel of this one, as being quite smooth, but there is a little bit of an oily character to it because of the... Um, the way the, the sort of brown, the the way that the sugars the brown sugars come out in this one one of the things I guess you have to talk about with this beer as well is its comparison to a Belgian brown but I would say that the Belgian brewns are a lot more um, phenolic some people might compare this to a Dubel as well but to me those beer styles are a lot more kind of phenolic if it had to you know lie between one of the two it's a bit closer to a brown I would say than um, in terms of its mouthfeel and things like that, than it is to a Dubel, but it's perhaps more close to a, a Dubel in terms of its flavour profile. But to me, um, it actually does come across as quite authentic. I probably wouldn't compare it to either of those, really. Um, but I can see why Belgians might make that connection. But to me, um, it is pretty authentic, this one. Uh, the malt base and the yeasty qualities in this one, then, it's got a nice smoothness to it, this beer. It becomes a little bit sweet and a little bit toasty. I would say that overall, though, it leans towards the, the kind of sweet side of things, but it maintains that toastiness, which keeps it like an authentic Scotch ale rather than an American brewed Scotch ale. Um, on the hoppy side of things, it's mainly quite smooth in its hoppiness. I think you're probably talking about 25 IBUs at most with this beer. It's not going to blow the head off you in terms of bitterness. And like I said, earlier you've got a nice quite juicy uh, but also quite smooth fruity quality to this beer as well there is a little bit of a phenolic cough syrupy quality in there but not um, overly much and again that phenolic kind of quality is probably more coming out from the the Belgian yeast and things like that mainly it'd be quite an oily fruit you would get in the um, the original Scottish ones I would say but overall this is a really really nice beer and I think this was a good introduction to the brewery as I said one that I've been meaning to review for quite a little while but it gets a big thumbs up from me this one so yeah if you want to try a Belgian take on a Scotch ale you can't really go wrong with this one like I said there's um Silly Scotch and also Gordon as well, and probably either this one or Gordon Scotch is the one you're most likely to come across. But a really interesting beer this, and I'm glad that I was able to review it for you, and cool to kind of review this one for review number 1885 as well. So yeah, hopefully the pars, their fortunes start to pick up soon, because they're not doing all that well at the moment, but fingers crossed. But yeah, a nice beer to review for this one, and I hope you guys have enjoyed my take on this beer and my little tribute to my football team as well. So um, yeah, let's leave it at that. So this one was the McShoof, a Scotch Ale at 8% ABV from Brasilita Schoof in the southeastern part of uh, Wallonie, Wallonia in Belgium, the French speaking region. A really interesting beer, this one very authentic with just a little kind of Belgian yeasty kind of twist to it in my opinion. A sort of 70 shilling type Scotch Ale, this one in my mind. But yeah, thank you again for watching my beer reviews. As always, please let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Brasserie de Achouf as well. Give me some other Belgian Scotch Ale recommendations too and I'm sure that will return to these guys at some point in the fairly near future. I might review their Christmas beer actually quite soon so keep an eye out for that review but cool to finally have a review from this brewery and i hope you've enjoyed it until the next time slant you snow and i'll catch you guys very soon the, the mcshoof from brasley de Schoof in wallonia in belgium slant you skull proust sante